My next problem is why I have no audio. Um, there's various muting points with the switches. Now whether it's a contact problem I don't know. But there's basically a two transistor amplifier, pre-amplifier for the heads on this PCB here. And then it's fed into these Dolby boards which seem to contain all the other amplifications. So the obvious point would be to see if audio is coming from the pre-amplifier and being fed into these Dolby boards. I think that's where I'll start. Well that's the uh, input to the Dolby board and uh, just looks like a load of noise to me. There's nothing much going on there if I press stop. Still just noise so that doesn't look very helpful. I'll look at the other Dolby board. Again this is the input to the other Dolby board and it looks very much the same on the other channel so um, that's not uh, particularly good so the fault must be for the uh, the two Dolby boards so there is some switching there so that's the next point to investigate I guess well I've decided to just put external power into the uh, amplifier board and uh, if I just look at the decoupling capacitor where the preamp is I've got six volts so that's a bit mysterious that when the board was in I was actually getting no power so I'm slightly puzzled by that um, so there's obviously not a problem with the capacitor and just uh, probing here at the power for the microphone line amplifier there's about 10 volts there so yeah that, that's odd so why isn't this being powered up while it's in the unit? That is a bit strange. <sighs> Thought occurred to me because it's been dropped if I've got a broken circuit board, but uh, we'll have a look and see what we can figure out. I think sometimes we all have these grrr moments. Anyway, I've cleaned the contacts on this board again and made sure it's definitely seated properly. And the results are there is power to the preamp. Now. And there we go and well one VU meter reading I think it might be only a tone on one channel on this recording but let's try fast forwarding and remember whether Both seem to be moving. Amusing in some ways, but not others. I've actually cleaned up the pinch wheels now. And uh, what happens when I start playing a tape? It starts riding the front pinch wheel, doesn't it? Um, anyway, I've had another look. I've used some rubber rev uh, reviver. And also a little bit of lubricant on this front pinch wheel. Because it was very very dry um, of course it doesn't help the fact the belt is exceedingly loose so that might be poss possibly why the loops not working ideally but again it's it's another indication that uh, you have to be careful so I've I now Chris this tape twice now <laughs> well just following the instructions it's probably a better idea I've removed the circlet from here Remove this spring here. Now I've got access to this plate. There's two brackets just here. That's a distinct shot. You can see them here and here. So that's the next bit that come out. Just looking at these pinch wheels. I have a few pinch wheels of this size, and it looks like they may be a fit. Um, diameter looks the same. Ooh, could I be lucky? Though they haven't got the brass bit in the middle, they might just... This protrusion here might be the problem though, so it might not work, but... There's a little bit of give there. I don't suppose there's a lot of give on that one. I think they might work, it might just be this bit here that's the problem. Okay, I think I might sort of stage unplug the head so 
that's the grey one that's at the top it's the red one which I assume is the raised head along with the brown one and that one at the bottom so there's the heads unplugged before I start removing anything else um, that's done so that's these two brackets next what I'm going to do about these flywheels I ask myself good question um, didn't really thought of that <laughs> just uh, removing these brackets I just realised they're attached by strings to this plate so it's a bit scary uh, screws out oh now it's scary I see pull them through I see now well carefully does it which I don't think I'm doing very carefully here come on <laughs> I'm making a bit of a bulls up of this um, right but there's the ball bearings and oh my goodness it's like treacle Blech. So that's not so good. Hmm. Okay, at least I can see how it comes apart now. And there's quite a bit of corrosion on this aluminium. I'm going to need to clean that up as well. So I'll take the ball bearings out next. Now, I don't fancy wrapping sellotape round as it suggests, so I might have to sit and come up with something else. I wonder if clothes pegs would hold it. Hmm, I'll have to see. Well, um, ball bearings out. Two screws are out belt is off let's see what happens I'm going to hold the flywheels and try pulling ah there's a third one look I've missed it fool read the instructions right okay okay let's try again ah and there are the flywheels quite dense there we go and the belt which looks like it's seen better days well I'm in there's the two motors and the whole mechanism is out I suppose I need to turn my attention to this motor here the synchronous motor and its lubrication and the same for these real motors um, just a quick close up view of the deck stripped down I think yeah there we go May 1973 on the uh, spool motors a little quick clean of the deck I think get some of this grease off Just looking at the parts here, you can see where the grease has been running. That's where the free ball bearings is. And there's another point here with the grease run, which corresponds to this little spike here. And this brass insert is removable, so I tried not to drop that on the floor. <laughs> the uh, flywheels have a small nylon washer in each of them as well. So I'm going to clean some more of this grease up and I've got to be honest with you, it's really, really difficult to clean this grease out. I'm just using IPA, but uh, yeah, yeah, I've gone very, very hard indeed. Okay, I'm just uh, in the stage of reassembly now. I've lubricated the uh, capstan bearings, a little bit of plastic lubrication on the nylon supports at the back, at the other side of the capstan flywheel sits I bent the belt round like this in the hope that uh, it might make 
uh, get keeping the belt on easier. I'm sure there must be another way to do this, but uh, anyway, it's nice to be putting things back together. The amount of grease and bits of rubber belt to remove, it's taken me a little while clean all the flywheels up carefully. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully now on the home straight. Okay, here's the flywheels bidding around with its new belt, but just a little point, the belt I took off is 5mm, this one is 4 now I think it's sitting on the capstan, uh, sorry, the fly, uh, the motor, synchronous motor pulley a little bit different, now if it doesn't balance and sit on it in the right way, it's, it's, as you can see, it's not, a bit hard to pick up, but it's not actually completely flat it's got a how would I say it's got a it's bigger in the middle and then the outside of so the belt sort of follows and sits if it doesn't sit in the right place I'd imagine the speed's going to be wrong it's not something I can correct being a synchronous motor so I'm just uh, at this moment just a little intrigued by that so we'll have to see if the speed's correct if it well, I got my ball bearings back in now and re-greased and I'm ready to put the uh, head and pinch wheel uh, plate back on now. I've been running the motor a little while, just let it work in. This little bit of oil come up onto the uh, capstans, but I've cleaned that off. Um, that's what I'd expect as things work in. Anyway, so yeah, put the plate on next clean that up, just put a bit of grease on that bit, I'll rely on what I've put on the other the ball bearings for the rest, I don't need too much grease so, yep, yeah, that's the next step amazing what a new bit of grease does isn't it <laughs> that, that is seriously different Definitely different. Well, where are we with this monster? Well, one thing I know is I've been having a few random stops. I've been playing this for two or three hours and there's still a few random stops occasionally. So I need to investigate that. Whether it's switches, whether it's the timing circuit playing silly, I don't know yet. I have recorded with it and... Uh, use the 0 db as a reference but on playback we're about 10 db down i've confirmed that on a, another deck um, so that's a bit curious but uh, playback from another recording isn't too far up that was recorded at about 0 to minus 3 and that's reading right although the left channel is reading a lot lower so what that's caused by i'm not quite sure at the moment so Quite a few more problems to sort out, it seems. I've just uh, removed the pause control and... Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely treacle. It's even thicker than treacle. It's hardly surprising the pause control was struggling to function. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, treacle grease on this one. This is the Amplifier 2 PCB I'm just working on at the moment. Um, as you can see the chrome switch is on this side and there's various capacitors and resistor and the Dolby switch. I've been trying to flush out the switches and get a little bit of grease in the latch mechanism as you can see with the bit of metal on top. And they feel much better now. Indeed the mono switch is working correctly now. Well I've got the uh, board back in and random stopping is still occurring unfortunately so I'm just having a look at the moment at the signal from the uh, amplifier for the spools. Well it's hardly surprising I've been having difficulty throttling the circuit for the amplifier 2 board. If I'd looked carefully, uh, 623, this board is actually the board that was used in the TCD 300. So this must be a very early 310 to still be using that board um, but this explains uh, some of the difficulties having following the circuit diagram. <laughs> so always check the obvious first, but um, since I've recapped it, it's got a bit of a habit of comp 
keep stopping. It's as though the pulses aren't enough to hold the Smith trigger on. They seem regular enough. So the, um, that's my next um, problem, I guess. Okay, let's have a look what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> this is the old style board that I've got. The fast forward and rewind motors have got a one ohm resistor to ground. So that then comes into this amplifier. It says there should be a 1 volt 17 hertz signal. Well, it depends on the speed of the reel, doesn't it, obviously? Then we've got voltage doubler. That feeds the Smith trigger here. Then this output transistor, and when that's on, it uh, must pull the uh, voltage down to the voltage regulator that supplies the motors and, of course, the whole solenoid on the... Uh, solenoid so if that drops then the solenoid is going to drop out now this bit here this transistor at the top Q506 with the diode in the emitter a bit odd but as far as I can work out that is the speed control um, transistor and that will pull the voltage down to the regulator and slow the spool down as it gets towards the end on fast forward and rewind so I'm going to have a look to see what we've got coming out of this amplifier first Okay, I've got the scope connected to the collector of the last transistor in the motor signal amplifier and uh, zero point is the bottom graticule. So we can see we've got about six volts. Now I'm going to bung it into play. It originally rises now, I would say, if I could keep it going, there's certainly more than one volt pulses there, most definitely. say about four volts or so wouldn't you if not five so plenty of signal there let's just have a look at the signal we're hitting fast forward and rewind very very large signal right um, I've changed range on one volt per division we're now looking at the smoothing capacitors after the voltage doubler that's at the beginning of the Smith trigger. Now the first transfer of the Smith trigger is sitting at 1.3 volts so we're going to need at least 1.9 to hold that transistor on. Um, so what I expect to see is a capacitor charging and discharging as the pulses come in. So um, that's what uh, we'll look at next. So if I pop it into play let's see what happens. It initially goes up and that's the pulse generated by the capacitors that initially synchronise the Smith trigger. Now for some reason the plate is now staying in but it is getting awfully, yeah 1.9 that's very, very close to dropping out. I notice the cassette player isn't dropping out at the moment which is absolutely typical. Might just be a bit of extra noise but yeah you can see that's discharging and getting very very close to indeed dropping out very very close 1.9 that's only going to be just 0.6 across that transistor so that's probably where the problem lies and the question is why is this signal so low well that's a good question initially it goes up pulses up to three when it's a pulse it gets three volts that's quite good because we knew we had a two to three volt pulse on the other side but it could be there's something wrong with the voltage doubler very very difficult to say. Um, let's have a look what happens in fast forward and rewind. I bet it's very high. Oh yes, yes that's a massive signal. Absolutely no trouble with the Smith trigger holding on with that is there. But it's just the question of why it's so low. It's a number of things really it could be that that signal amplifier isn't high enough but I find it interesting that the circuit diagram says one volt does it mean one volt RMS maybe um, I'm not sure but that's certainly not enough is it to keep that uh, triggered reliably so um, there's a number of things I could do I could do something silly like make the resistor bigger on the bottom of the motor or it could just simply be that there's an issue with um, the amplifier, the amplifier, the gain of the transistors has dropped. 
so that um, it doesn't give as much voltage output as it used to. They do, they do um, deteriorate with age transistors. Here's the oscilloscope showing the capacitor voltage on Smith trigger and the pulse coming in. The pulse is 2 volts division and I'm getting much better sync doing this but uh, yeah there's a nice big pulse but the thing is it's very very slow. Now I'm making the most of um, it being as slow as possible as you can see I'm right at the end of the tape and the front spool is going to be running as slow as it's going to be so the time between the pulses is now at its longest. Um, I was thinking why it sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. When I came up here the other night um, I had the window open, it was cold and of course the uh, switch on voltage of a transistor gets higher when it's colder so that might be the explanation of why it was playing up more then. But I just need to look at this amplifier, I've got a few clues in my head they actually changed the gain in the newer version of this I notice on the manual. Um, I'm going to have a look at the circuit and just see if it's possible to increase the gain. It makes you wonder when the motors wear, because this has got some play because the head's worn, that the voltage from the commutator changes. Um, when you get carbon across the track, uh, sorry, across the commutator, that the signals are not quite so big. And I'm curious that they've changed the circuit at least once and they've added a modification um, on the second circuit, the one that uh, the later circuit in the 310. So I'm now wondering if that's the uh, what's going on there. Okay, after looking at what was done in the um, newer circuit, the modification, the feedback was changed, which is that 220, and the 3.9k, which is the input resistor. Now, if you look at that, there's a very low emitter resistor there, so the input impedance of this must be quite low. So I've hoofed that down from 3.9k to 2.2. Um, this is always going to be a bit of a compromise, I think. Um, you can see it's staying a little bit higher now. It's not fantastic, but it's made an improvement. It might be enough, but the issue would always be that um, when you go into fast forward and rewind, it's going to charge up so much that it's going to take a while for the auto stop to uh, come into action. Now what they should have done, I feel, is put a xenodiode across that uh, capacitor to limit how far it could charge up. Try and keep the timing a bit more constant, so I might need to look at that, but for now that might be enough just to keep it going. But I, I definitely need to think about this. Um, I just need it to not keep falling out while I'm testing it. Um, so hopefully that will be enough for now, but perhaps I need to hoik those transistors out and see if they've got low gain.